This morning is the 18th Sunday after Pentecost, and the title of my message is Keep the Lord Today. And it's a really long scripture this morning. It's 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8b. So I'll read that to you from the New Revised Standard Version. That's again, if you want to follow along, it's on 1 Peter chapter 5. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. I have a Bible clip to Revelation, so I'm not sure it didn't look right. It's like, that's oh, not right. I think it's there. I don't know a lot of stuff I read. I'm to look at the top and see if that's the wrong book. <laughs> Anyway. No, you almost read that so fast by the time it was over, I didn't even know you were doing it. <laughs> I can't look at that. I thought that's wrong. I didn't think about looking at the top. That was in the wrong section. Uh, okay. Well, being diligent is the key here. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. There's a reason for Christians, that Christians uh, must work on growing with the attitudes of submission, with the attitudes of humility, the attitudes of trust, and the attitudes of self-control. Christians face a fierce and relentless supernatural opposition from Satan and his demons. Christians must not become indifferent to this reality or lenient of sin. Why? Well, because a Christian can easily fall victim to the enemy, which is Satan and his demons. The reality of spiritual warfare calls for this vigilance. Peter tells us in the scripture to be on the alert. This is actually a very important command, more than a request. Peter is urging us to be watchful and stay awake. The spiritual forces that assault Christians, not only directly but often fully and very slyly, demand that those who love Jesus Christ maintain a vigilance. Jesus, he told his disciples, keep watching and praying and you may not enter into temptation the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The closer you grow in knowing and serving God, the worse it gets. I'm sure there's many of you here that have, when you accepted Jesus Christ, you saw the challenges of the outside world and the temptations that you faced before got stronger. Satan doesn't like it. The closer you get to God, the more he's going to mess with you. He's evil. Very evil. And he's so sly. He doesn't like peace. He doesn't like peace at all. The devil wants people against people. It may be something really big, and it may be something really tiny. Either way, the devil is excited when he turns God's loving Christians against God and against each other. It's hard. It is really hard when you're trying to love God with all your heart and all your might and all your soul and the devil comes in and says, no, I don't want that. I want you angry. I want you mad. I want you unhappy. I want you blah. It's hard to resist it. Because we're human. We like to feel blah. It's so much easier to frown when you put a turn frown beside him. But the devil is mean. And he's so tricky how he does stuff. Peter identifies Satan as our adversary. And he is. Satan is ugly. And he is extremely, I mean extremely sly. Satan is not only the adversary of God and his holy angels, but Satan 
is vicious. He is relentless. He's the enemy of all God's people. Now, I'm all serious about this because I'm just spitting all of my notes. <laughs> but the word adversary is used as a technical term. It means legal opponent as well as any kind of enemy who was seriously and aggressively hostile. So he's an adversary. When we use the term re-entered re devil, the term re-entered devil takes the opposition to the level of a malicious enemy who, who slanders or attacks. Jesus himself, he called Satan, the ruler of this world, which showed the platform from which he launches his malicious assaults. The devil commands the demonic realm and rules over the human fallen world system. The devil, he personally, through his demons, who like himself, never sleep or rest, just keep going like a predator in the night of his own evil darkness, hunting to kill. The scripture says that he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Satan is not trying to wound us in any way. He didn't want to wound us. He was out there to destroy us. He's not that nice guy. He's a bad, bad person. If you want to call him a person, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call him that. He's bad. He's evil. But Satan's opposition to God and believers is beyond the human enemies of God and his word. The demons are not bound. They're, they are not bound. Are, they're sinister. They're debauched to <coughs> be beyond the world system. God's children in their struggle against deception are actually wrestling with and just and they're contending with the demonic strategies. It's, it's so hard. You can feel that you're being drawn one way and you don't want to go that way. You want to go to God and you're being pulled to the evil side. It's hard. We're human. That's how we're wired. But Satan and the demons hide unseen in the spirit world. We can't see it, but by golly, they're here. We came in here a week or so ago. God's presence was strong. Each and every one of you felt it. This room was hot with God's love. You were all doing testimony. You were smiling. You were loving each other. The devil hates it. So what does he do? He messes with us. Devil's messing with us, people. The more and the closer we get to God, the more we're going to have to fight him off. My strongest weapon is to pray. And I pray all the time that God puts a shield protection, a hedge of protection about this church and each one of us as individuals that love Jesus Christ. We're struggling. And they're hiding. We can't see them. They slip up. But Satan, throughout the scriptures, has tried to destroy Jesus Christ and God's plans. Throughout the scriptures, Satan has tried to destroy God's people. Look at the scriptures. Constantly he was trying to mess with somebody. Constantly he was trying to destroy the good. Constantly Jesus had to stand up and say, no, man. He tempted Jesus. He tempted Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, no. <clears throat> One of Satan's strategies has been to oppose the holy angels. When he opposed the holy angels, and there was a war in heaven. When Satan first fell from heaven, those angels who joined his rebellion accompanied him and warring, warring, they were fighting against Michael, the super angel, and his leagues of holy angels. After Satan was expelled, because he lost the war in heaven, he was expelled from heaven. And so he and his demons begin their assault against 
God's children. Anybody that is a child of God is going to have to deal with Satan and his demons constantly. That's why we have to keep focused on Jesus Christ constantly. God's children are believers. Those who obey God's commands and trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. Man, if you don't trust Jesus Christ for your salvation, you are in deep mud. You need boots to go up to your waist. But Satan isn't content on just having control over the unbelievers. Unbelievers are easy for Satan. He just tells them just do what they want to do. They're fine. But he wants to take over the believers, those that are strong, the <coughs> love of Jesus Christ of God. Satan wants to devour believers in a number of ways. We read in scripture that God may allow it. And he has allowed Satan to attack a believer directly. For example, the book of Job, the story of Job. Job is one of those who had been attacked. God said, do whatever you want to him, but don't you dare kill him. So if you want to read a horrible story, read Job. It's short, but the man's life was a mess. And where was his friends? Blaming him, because he wasn't doing something right. But that wasn't what it was. Generally, Satan and his demons, they constantly mount the attack on individual believers through this sly and worldly system. Satan likes to attack anyone in God's family. He wants destruction of anyone who believes. Believers, both leaders and the members of a congregation, are extremely vulnerable to Satan's attacks within the church. He didn't like us. So he's going to cause mischief. Satan seeks to destroy the church's unity. When a church is bound, really tight, I see you bust churches apart. He busts us apart. He puts it in two. Some of you have lived through the separation of churches. You've seen the ugly side. You've seen the, the godly side and the evil side of what he can do to a church. Stephen and I come from a church that was absolutely imploded at one time because eyes got taken off. And they got put in on personal, personal issues that shouldn't have been there. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ. The stronger a church becomes in God's family, the more attacks can be expected from Satan. Satan and his demons will use anything they can, even if they can find just a little sliver, just a little tiny sliver, to tear a church apart and everyone against each other. That's how it works. He like he goes out like he's eating an elephant, one little piece at a time. But Peter said, "Our first line of defense for protection from Satan's strategies is simple and direct. What do we say? We gotta do. We gotta be alert. We gotta be alert. It's so simple. We just have to be alert." Satan was able to deceive Eve in the garden. He actually went into God's holy ground and he deceived Eve. So what makes us think that we can be outside the garden and not be deceived? So those of us outside of the garden are, wow, we are a really easy target for Satan in his craftiness and deception. But Satan has already been defeated by Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross. And through belief in the truth and, and prayer can also be defeated in, in believers' lives. You have to trust. You have to believe in the truth. And you have to pray. It's by the word of God, believe and obey, that Christians overcome Satan. The scripture tells us that believers will be victorious if they are spiritually alert for satanic influences coming through their surroundings and relationships. 
and assess potential temptations and flee from them. Since Satan is a liar, and he's a deceiver, oh, is he ever a liar and deceiver? The only sure way to stand up against him is by faith, faithful obedience to the biblical truth. This battle that we're on in this world right now is completely spiritual. We might be bat battling with other countries and stuff and have different opinions about this or that and maybe friends are at each other's throats and maybe they're not, but the thing of it is, it's a spiritual battle. In this spiritual, natural realm, we have really got to stay alert or we're just easy prey. <coughs> And we're dead meat. I, for one, I, for one, ask God to clear my heart, open my eyes and my ears, and I want to see Jesus Christ. That's all I'm concerned about right now is Jesus Christ. What I can do to build God's kingdom, to bring others that don't know Jesus Christ to him. So he can come to glory with us for eternity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to be submissive to Christ's own church. Help us to serve with humility. Thank you for your written word that helps us to trust you more each time we read it. Help us to have more self control with the basic element of godly thinking. Help us to remain vigilant and stay on the alert so Satan can't slip up on us. Thank you for helping us to resist Satan. Thank you for helping us to remain firm in our faith. Thank you for giving us grace and mercy and hope. We thank you for loving us so much that you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross so that we can live. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.